Hey guys, this is Ryan Phillips here. Welcome to the Ignite Q&A coaching call for the 9th of December 2019. Let me know in the chat box. Give me a number one in the chat box if you can see my screen and if you can hear me okay. And if you can, we'll dive in and we'll get started. Let's have a look, see. Cool, we have Sadiqa in the house, Sean, Robert, Dan. Sadiqa says one. Awesome. So, guys, as normal, ask your questions in the question box and we'll get you rocking and rolling with your business. I'll help you out in every way that I can. If you don't have any questions, put a number two in the chat box because then I'm going to do a training today on some goal setting and some business and project planning. So I think that will help everyone out, especially as it's coming up to uh, January. I normally do all of my planning and all of that stuff in between Christmas and New Year. So I think today would be the perfect time to go over that with you guys. Just going to take a big sip of water. OK, Sadiqa says two. Robert says two. If you have a question that you type it out in the chat box, put a three in the chat box and I'll answer your question first before I go into this week's training. Again, this week's training is on goal setting, business and uh, project planning. And you guys always do this to me. So we have uh, on the line, we have Dan Gerson, uh, if I pronounce Gerson right, let me know if I don't. Robert, Sean, Sadika, and Robert and Sadika are the only ones posting numbers in the chat box. Cool, Sean says two. Alrighty then, so Dan and Gerson, because you're not posted in the chat box, I'm going to assume you're on Facebook or watching YouTube <laughs> in a different window. So, uh, no questions, we'll dive into the training. So, let me actually preface this uh, training today. Uh, let me bring up the old goal setting sheet and let me make this bigger so you guys can actually see it. Cool. So what I do, guys, between Christmas and New Year, uh, on Boxing Day, I, I actually always go to Leeds to party with some of my old dance friends. And it's basically there's only two times at Christmas where I'll have a drink and, you know, get smashed and all that good stuff. And one's Boxing Day and one is uh, a couple of weeks. But it's like mid Christmas. And both of those are in Leeds with my old dancing friends uh, who I, I kind of party with. All the other times in the UK, I don't get drunk uh, because, you know, hangovers and all of that isn't conducive to growing a company or building the business. I've just started having a glass of red wine each night uh, for the health benefits, but only a very small glass doesn't get me even tipsy. So December is a time where I kind of switch off, connect with some old friends. We meet up once a year, every year. A few of the guys that come, it's the only time I see them in that year and we have a good time. Uh, and kind of after Boxing Day, between Boxing Day and New Year is the time when I like to plan. So what I do is I'll go and I'll book myself into a hotel, just a local ho hotel in Leicester, uh, you know, the Hilton, the Marriott, uh, just the, you know, half decent hotel on my own, no one with me. Um, and I'll go for one or two nights. And what I'll do is I'll check in, I'll go to the gym, uh, I'll have... Uh, a nice meal. I'll go upstairs, I'll do my vision planning, my goal setting, uh, have a nice meal in the evening, go use the spa facilities, have a really nice good night's sleep, get up uh, again, go gym in the morning, have breakfast, finish uh, off any of the goal setting stuff and then come home. That's what I'll normally do in between Christmas and New Year every year. That's what I'll go and do. So what I want to share with you is what I do when I actually go through that process. So I think it could benefit you. You don't have to go away. The only reason why I go away to do it 
is uh, you know I spend a lot of time at home I work from home so I just like to change the environment uh, it's a good thing for me now when I do my goal setting when I do my planning there's always four areas that I look at and uh, Ty Lopez calls these the four areas of the good life health wealth relationships and happiness and I look, look at this as a day so I think if I can fit all of these in a day my life's going to be pretty good so when I look at the four areas of the good life and the reason why I'm um, kind of sharing these with you these are the important parts if you've ever seen the wheel of life uh, the wheel of life is kind of like a life coaching tool where you basically have a wheel and you have to draw a line across at the level where you're at. Uh, and normally it's got like family, spiritual, health, business, fun, this kind of thing. And no, you know, no one ever has a full, but most people have a wonky wheel. But a lot of the stuff on these Wheel of Lives are optional games that you can choose to play. So what I like to look at thinking about focus is the three games that you do not have a choice whether you play them or not and that is you know in this life the health game the wealth game you know wealth income finances and the relationship game you know whether we choose to play them consciously or not we're either going to play them or they're going to play us so they're the three areas that i like to focus on first so for health like i said i try and fit these into my day so health for me is in the morning with my morning routine and all of the health stuff that I do. You know, wealth, finance, income building is obviously the work that I do. And that's what I do in the daytime. Relationship slash social circle is the evening after work. Uh, and then happiness, what I do for happiness. And by the way, for the relationship and the social circle stuff, what I try to do every year is try and cut it in half and double down on the good so I kind of look at the people the relationships in my life and I look at who's who do I enjoy spending time with who do I don't who do I want to deepen the relationship with and I always try and instead of add people in the relationships and the social circle side I try and just you know double down on the good relationships that I want to have and then for happiness i look at cutting out the daily things that aren't fun or interesting uh, and this is what i try and do throughout the year for happiness so some of these might be chores that i can outsource uh, by increasing my income some of them might be um certain things that I can buy that make other parts of life easier by taking out the things that I don't enjoy doing uh, and that's what I do for the happiness side I look at what do I do day to day that I don't enjoy maybe in a business sense it might be um, writing emails so a goal for the year might be to hire somebody that does all of our email marketing because then it cuts out the thing that I don't enjoy doing in the day so I can feel more happiness in the day if that makes sense so they're the four areas that I look at the reason I look at these four areas are these are the non-negotiables these are the games that we don't have a choice whether we play or not the health wealth and relationship game and I add happiness in there as well okay so it's things to be mindful on um again what i'm going to do because this is a business call i'm going to break down what i do in a business sense for planning uh rather than all of this other stuff i just wanted to give you like a thirty thousand foot view of what i do in between christmas and new year so first thing that i do is i look at the vision for my life because when i and i learned this from one of my mentors peter sage uh, and the reason why i do this is I always think that having a long-term goal and short-term goals is beneficial because the big long-term goal, the big vision, is what can really motivate you and it's kind of like your 
uh, North Star, if you like. It's something that you can focus on that, you know, whether you believe in the law of attraction and the science of manifestation, you know, whether you believe in that or not, one thing that I believe in, I, I do believe in that, but one thing I think that's a bit more easier to understand is whatever you focus on, you get. Okay, and if I focus on a three year vision every single day, then it's going to be a lot more likely that that vision is going to materialize. So that's what I do first. The first thing that I do when I go away is I create a three year vision. And what I do is I basically put some music on, some inspirational music on for half an hour. And the only uh, rule is for the whole 30 minutes, I'm not allowed to stop writing. And I just write about every single thing that I want in regards to health, my business, the relationship that I want, the partner, the body that I want to uh, create, the house I want to live in. I just write. And then after half an hour, I iterate it down. So I really try and then hone in on the things that really resonate and the things that I want to create. Uh, as I said, I do this at a hotel. And also then what I do after is I put it into language that inspires and motivates me because I read my uh, vision every single day. It's part of my morning practice. That's why I have it up here on my uh, bookmarks bar. I always have my vision up here. As you can see, my uh, three year vision down here. Um, and uh, I, I won't read it out because it's a bit long. If you want me to read out my three year vision, I don't mind sharing it with you. Uh, put a yes in the chat box if you want me to. If not, it is a bit long, so it might take up some time. You might not be interested in that. And then what mind movie means is I create a mind movie of my goals. So uh, of, of my vision, my three year vision. Um, and think on my YouTube channel I'll have a mind movie so a mind movie is just basically a vision board so if I head over to my YouTube channel uh, your channel let's see if my mind movie is on here so I'll be able to post it in the group if you guys would want to check it out yeah here we go this is the first time I actually made one and I shared it in 2016. I have, I, I make a new one every year. Uh, and basically what a mind movie is, is the same thing as a vision board, but I put my headphones in, I've got music that really kind of gets me going and I post all the things. And, and this is quite interesting. So, and I, I'll post this in the group so you can see, but just from 2016, if I fast forward through the mind movie, uh, I've definitely not got that car, unfortunately, but this is quite similar to my apartment that I moved in before I moved into my house, which is quite interesting to see. It's like a nice apartment. This is the watch that I actually have now, didn't have it at the time. Um, not attracted the relationship that I want. Uh, the travel, you know, it's got a lot of travel places on here, but it's basically a vision board. It's got my bucket list stuff, the things that I have for goals in the business, income goals, um, all of that stuff. So, yeah, I always create a mind movie after I create the vision. Robert says, is your mind movie made on PowerPoint? No, there's actually an app. I think it's 70 quid called Mind Movie or it's 100 quid or 100 dollars. But if you go to click off the website, it offers you it you at a cheaper price. Mindmovies.com. Uh, mail. What do you do when some prompt? Um, just take me to the mind movies thing. All right, let's uh, mindmovie.com. I guess you have to go through the quiz. Ah, here we go. So yeah, uh, products, Mind Movies 4.0 uh, creation kit. I think it's that one. Yeah, and it's just like a video software. 
it's like a video app, but it, all, it already has things that you can drag in. And what it does is Hi, it just I'm Natalie Ledwell. It just has nice transitions, like it uh, it blends each image and video together. But I, I just download images from Google and use that. But yeah, one payment at 97. But I think if you click off it, then it says you can have it at 77, if I remember right. Let's see. X. Oh, maybe not. Close. No, or two payments, 58. But that's what I use for the Mind movie. Um, yeah, no worries, Robert. Uh, Simon and Robert say they would like to hear my three year vision. Uh, guys, give me just give me a two in the chat box if you would like to hear the vision. Give me a one in the chat box if you really don't. You're just like, Ryan, get to the business planning stuff. I'm on a tight schedule. Let me get to the good stuff kind of deal. And that's cool as well. Cool. Dan says two. Simon says two. Cool. So this is my uh, this is my uh, 2019 three year vision. So I have it in four sections. I have like my normal vision, which is uh, here. It's like a page and a half. Then I have my health vision, which is, you know, a couple of paragraphs. I have my relationship vision. Again, a couple of paragraphs. My growth and development vision, which is like maybe a three quarters of a page funny that yeah uh, you see what you focus on you know i always I, growth and development is one of my highest values so you know as it stands and uh, more written there then i have identity and values as the last one so it's uh yeah so this is my three-year vision and again how i got to this was write down loads of things for 30 minutes um also, I, I do this. There's a group of us. We have a WhatsApp group of people who we all do this at the same time. We share each other's vision so we can take inspiration, especially language and how people put things that really resonate with us from each other so we can really make them good. Then I iterate it down and it takes me about a day to do this. So here it is. It's now January 1st, 2023. I'm 37 years of age and I've just bought my dream home a modern but homely estate that is a sanctuary filled with love, abundance and harmony, ready to receive our family. I wake up in the morning with my partner in my arms, with tears of joy running down my cheeks of infinite gratitude and acknowledgement that I listened to my heart and created my dreams. We couldn't be more excited for our children to be born into the world that are unconditionally loved, respected and supported with perfect health. Our friends and family are really supportive and wonderful. And I relish in the fact that I share my abundance with them. Next to our home is our garage, which houses my Lamborghini Huracan, Range Rover Sport and my partner's car with whom I'm very much in love. My achievements over the last few years have been phenomenal. I've created millions for myself and others. Every month new and amazing partnerships and opportunities are coming our way and I couldn't be more excited about the Phillips Foundation, our charitable project we're eager to get off the ground. Not only am I worth in excess of $10 million, but more important, I've become a person with a true sense of purpose and identity as to who I am and what I stand for. Working in harmony with the unseen forces of the universe and inspiring others by shining my own candle so bright that they're spontaneously combust. The will I've created for abundance continually overflows and manifests itself in my life in unlimited quantities. And I live in a continual state of happiness, gratitude and appreciation of life. My character is one of adventure, excitement, growth, contribution, respect for others, fun and kindness. I am playful, energetic and I live with passion. I'm also a strong and natural leader and possess the health, vitality, physique, and stamina of an athlete. I speak the truth and not driven by the need for significance. I'm perfectly willing to be unpopular in the moment for what I believe to be the long-term greater good. My insights continually inspire others and I live with my valve fully open, allowing me to act as a powerful channel for infinite intelligence to help me greater contribute to the world. Life is amazing and I look forward with excitement and anticipation as to where and how my destiny will unfold from here over the next 85 years, now that I've proudly laid the correct foundation for which it can grow. So that's the main 
part of the vision. Then I just break down each part. So for health, feeling totally amazing, my body, which is my partner, is a vast and limitless generator of energy. All the cells in my body continually vibrate at the highest frequency of optimal health, and my senses, thought patterns, and intuition are razor sharp. I am clear that my values are health and vitality, not significance or looking good. It just so happens looking good is a welcome byproduct of the masterful level of health that I embody. Because of that, I have the physique of my dreams, the strength of an ox, the fl flexibility of a yoga master, perfect structural integrity, and the speed, reactions, endurance, and power of an athlete, a physical manifestation of what is possible when you sculpt the body with the mind. So that's my vision for health. Relationships. Having become the person that my ideal partner would most wish to be with, I have now attracted the woman of my dreams, my soulmate, my best friend, and the eventual bearer of our children. I'm ecstatically happy and I feel proud that I can provide and care for my family. My knowledge of relationships serves me well, and I'm continually looking for ways to appreciate and love my partner even more, never taking for granted any part of the relationship. This is a priority to me. I live for lighting up my lady and love nothing more than putting a smile on her face. There is an ever-present spark of electricity and excitement that underpins the flow of energy and the dynamic sexuality between us, and we work and integrate seamlessly, turning what were two individual instruments into an orchestra of happiness. Next, growth and development. This is the second to last part of my uh, three-year vision. I'm continually raising my level of conscious awareness through meditation and other Jedi practices in my quest to increase my base level of consciousness to default to unconditional love over fear. I now live in through me, only occasionally visiting by me. I am completely connected to and now work in total harmony with source, using my gift for the betterment of what is. As a partner with life, I co-create and attract my own conditions and circumstances into my experience using the latest cutting edge knowledge of the science of manifestation. This is my most sacred and precious asset. I've also been trained as a dynamic speaker and this part of my destiny has opened an entirely new chapter and dimension to my experience, vastly increasing my ability to contribute. For this, I am truly privileged. My communication and psychology skills have such a high standard, effectiveness and congruency that they allow me to connect and influence across the entire spectrum of human emotions and impact people on a level that is far deeper and longer lasting than they have ever been before. I'm also a super successful online business consultant that helps other online businesses grow and thrive so they can give their gift to the world to make it a better place. Because of this, when it comes to reaching the inevitable end of my own journey, I seek not to arrive with the pain of regret, nor with my own dream still inside of me, but instead with the knowledge that I lived a bigger life than just my own, that I gave the best of who I am to make a difference. And through these efforts, the ripples of contribution will continue to spread across the ocean of life long after I've lowered the sail on my own final voyage. This is the mission and vision of my life, the reason I strive to be all I can be, to contribute to humanity in a way that leaves a legacy long after I'm gone. Then the final part, identity and values. Out of all the parts of the amazing life I've created, what I have achieved is a pale secondary and a mere consequence of who I've become. The foundation of my identity is built on the ethics of my character and integrity. Who I am and what I stand for are no longer questions I cannot answer, but opportunities to express myself as an authentic, loving human being with virtues of adventure, excitement, gratitude, passion, love, growth and contribution, and a willingness to stand up for what I believe in. That life is a tremendous gift that allows us the chance to be all we can be in every way possible. 
And along the way, we're here to help others by sharing the insights we gain from our own exciting journey so they may benefit also. So that's the vision for my life 2019. The first time I did this was three or four years ago at a Peter Sage seminar. And it was basically about making loads of money and buying things. <laughs> Since I've kind of uh, moved through uh, my own journey, it's transcended into this. So I read this every morning after I'm in a high vibrational state uh, and it's part of my morning routine. And that's the vision of my life. So that's what I do when I go uh, and check into the hotel in between Christmas and New Year. I'll relook at that vision. I'll change bits. I'll uh, see what's still congruent, what's not. And I'll just tune in and see what my truth is, where I'm at now. Uh, and then after all of that, I'll make a mind movie of it. So uh, I can, you know, after I've uh, done my morning uh, meditation, I'm in the zone. I can have you know, my AirPods in my ears. Uh, song blazing in that really kind of gets me emotionally and just see it all happening uh, right before me and that's what's good about the mind movie it's like a vision board on steroids now this is the next part after you have your three-year vision it's pretty easy to break down all of the other bits so what I do is I break it down so the three years I break it down into the first 12 months so the first year so I write down a 12 month plan. And again, this is just a dot in the board. It never goes to plan ever, but it's my intention that 12 months from today, this is what my business will look like. So when I write it this time, it might be the office that we've moved into is an incredible place where me, Chris, our friends, and all of the in-house employees can't wait to get to in the morning and they love to be. The energy in there is amazing. We've got three in-house staff that manage the remote teams and you know, blah, blah, blah. So that's what the 12 month plan is. And I've not done it yet because it's not that time between Christmas and New Year, but I basically make a 12 month plan. And with this, it's more like the 12 month vision. It's not like a, an, it's not an in-depth war map. Okay, that's what I'm gonna show you how we create that next. Then from the 12 month plan, so when I have a clear vision in my head of what you know the business is going to look like in 12 months then i can look at okay well that in that 12 month time there's four quarters in a year so if i break down that 12 month vision into four quarters what has to happen in the first quarter so then i write down the next vision so this is more like an intention worth where i intend to be during the next three months i will and this is where I get more specific. I know that in three months I could do a product launch. I know I could get a new webinar going with paid traffic. I know I could probably hire another member of staff, et cetera, et cetera. So I do the quarterly goals from the 12 month goals. Then I do the monthly goals. When I know what I need to do during the, during the next three months, well, I break that into thirds and the next 30 days, I know what I need to do. During the next 30 days, I will A, B and C. Then from that monthly goal, if I know what I need to do in the next 30 days, what am I going to do in the next seven days? I'll do my weekly goal. So for, so for me to achieve the monthly goal, I need to break that into four. And the first part of those four weeks, I need to A, B and C and then daily goals. Today I will uh, and I always do something towards the goal on the day, which I learned from Tim Ferriss, even if it's, you know, if it's to get a certain car. I'll call up the car showroom and find a time when I can go in, if that makes sense. Sadiqa says, do you just do quarter one or all four quarters at the same time? I just do quarter one, Sadiqa, I do. Single focus. Now, when you've got this down, this is more like, uh, you know, coming down here at the bottom parts, it's getting more actionable, but it's still more of kind of an intention and a vision exercise for me again so it's in my subconscious i know where i'm heading whatever you focus on you get does that make sense give me a two in the chat box if that makes sense then i'll show you how i actually break it down and go into the step-by-step nitty-gritty here are the things i need to do to actually achieve you know the things that i write down cool 
cool simon says two sadiq says two awesome so when i go through this this is when i bring out the old excel sheet so i have two sheets that i use i do a war map and i do a uh, rice analysis so what these are the reason i call this a war map is or it's not the reason why I call it a war map. It's just known as a war map. It's a popular uh, business planning tool is because you want to go after your goals like a general uh, attacks in war. You know, a general, they don't just send the troops out willy nilly to go and fight. If you've ever read The Art of War, you know, they meticulously plan and think where are the best strategic moves that are going to get us towards the end goal of winning the war it's very very strategic and they do the strategy first then the tactical implementation of that strategy comes second and that's how you want to go for your goals and i i honestly believe that all of this the mind movie the vision for your life reading every day having setting the intention all of that is brilliant and i think it's 50 percent of the work I think planning and execution is the other 50%. The outer world is a reflection of the inner world. In other words, the inner world creates the outer world. If you don't have this inner world stuff sorted, the vision, the mind movie, the intention, you know, you're going to struggle. But also, I believe that you can't meditate your way out of a tiger attack. Now, if you just sit down at home and meditate, on checks in the mail the only thing you're going to receive is an eviction notice i think it's 50 50. i think you set the intention but then you have to do the physical actions in the real world to go out and create that and this is what the war map and the rice tool is for so this is what i do and again this is one that i uh the first one that i made was in 2018 and i've got this so i can put it in the group and send out because these are just blank but what this is, is the map of the year. Now, the reason why I, I like seeing it like this, and the reason you just can't do this on Google Calendar or any calendar that I've seen, the Gmail calendar, the Apple calendar, the Google calendar, it doesn't have this functionality where we can go into the granular months, but also zoom out and see it all at once, okay? I like to work in three month blocks in quarters. That's how business generally runs. And I like to have a five day holiday at the end. So I'll work for 90 days, five days holiday, where in that holiday, I'll plan the next 90 days, but also rest and recuperate. Then work for 90 days, five days holiday, work for 90 days, five days holiday, work for 90 days, okay? And that's what these are on here. Another good thing about this is we generally think that a year is a long time, but when you see it mapped out like this, you, you get that visual kind of um, feeling that it's not. There's only you know four quarters in a year, and a quarter's not very long, especially when you see it on here. Time goes very fast, as I'm sure you're all aware. So this is what I do. I plan out the vacations. If you have like live events or anything like that, you'll want to plan those in here as well. You know, you might want to turn this to blue and have blue as live three day event, you know, whatever that is. And if I had that blue, I'd probably make the text white so it's easy to see. So it's just your, you know, high level overview. Now, how do we decide what goes in here and what goes in here? Well, this is what I do. I use this. This is how I plan big projects. I use the Rice Project Scoring Tool. Now, how this works, I'm just going to take a sip of water, guys. Just bear with me a second. Mm -mm. So how this works is we put in the project name and it gives us an objective view of what we should do first. We don't have to think about it. So, and again, I would think about this in more detail, but just for now, so you get an understanding, 
let's say that a new website was one of the projects another one was a new webinar another one might be a new uh, yeah, a new funnel needs to be built it might be higher an internal media buyer someone to run ads it might be hire a, a sales team or a, a salesperson so we just you know we have the big projects over here okay now this is what rice stands for r-i-c-e reach impact confidence effort and i've got this so it has it says this next to it so reach is how many customers will this project impact over a single quarter so a website might impact and again these are dots in the board i don't know how many people search for our business or anything but let's just say 250 people uh you know what what would the impact be of that so how much is this project how much will this project increase conversion rate when a customer encounters it massive would be 3x high would be 2x medium 1x low 0.5x minimal 0.25x so a new website and, and that company website because we've been you know it's three years four years and we still not got a company website the impact would probably be low so i'd put it'd be a 0 0.5 multiplier on the business i would say confidence how confident are we about the ops ops about the ops blah, 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 blah. how confident are we about the optimistic estimates for reach impact and effort so high confidence is 100 percent, which is normally i never put it in here medium confidence 80 percent low confidence 50 percent shot in the dark 20 percent or less so i'd probably say i'm pretty you know i don't really know what a website would do to impact so i'm pretty low confident on that now effort this says estimate the total amount of time a project will require from all members of your team product design engineering etc estimated as a number of person months or the work that one team member can do in a month so if you're a solopreneur you're not got a team it's just one person so if one person would take one month to build a website i'd put a one in there if one person would take half a month to build the website i'd put 0 0.5 in there if it would take two team members one month instead of one person taking one month to one two team members taking one month would mean it would be a two in here okay that's how this would work now if it was me and a designer and it'd take a month to get it done the efforts are two so it gives the rice score as 31. so now if i just fill this out quickly for the rest a new webinar would probably reach the impact they would have uh how many customers would this project impact over a single quarter or subscribers i would say let's say 2000 what's the impact that that would have so how much would this project increase conversion rate when a customer encounters it it would have a massive impact so it would have a three times multiplier on the business what's the confidence that i'd have i'd have a medium confidence in that because i've done it before the effort it'd probably take me one month to do it so one person one month would be a one so the rice score is 4800 hmm can you start to see how this works when we're looking at projects which project do i work on first the new website which has a rice score of 31 or the new webinar that has a rice score of 4800 takes the emotional component out and it just shows you uh logically what we should be working on uh, a new funnel what would the reach be with a new funnel let's say it'd be 3000 uh the impact that that would have let's say for example it'd be a 2x the confidence i would have 50 percent so i'd be testing it the effort it'd probably take me and someone else me and a designer maybe a copywriter a month so it'd be three people for one month so the rice score is a thousand hire an internal media buyer the reach might be a thousand the impact would be 
uh, I'd say it'd be pretty high, so maybe 2x confidence I'd have of that. 50%, you don't know who, you know, when you're hiring, you just give it your best shot. The effort, it would take that person one month to get started. The rice scores a thousand, hire a salesperson, but you know, you, you get the idea. And if I just put something in here, um, let's say, so we can see, you know, clearly the difference. So the first thing I should do is do the webinar. Second thing would be either of these two. Let's say I was 25% or 20% confident in the funnel. Oh, confidence. Twenty. Percent. So that means that would be second. This would be third. This would be fourth. This would be fifth. So now we know with the projects what we should focus our time on. Okay. So this sheet is telling us. So it's the new webinar is the first thing. So if I was doing that in the month of January and the start date, let's say I start back on, for argument's sake, the 1st of January uh, 2020, and because it's going to take one per, me one month, we should finish on the 31st of January. So then how I've got this on here, I go back to my war map, and from the 1st of Jan until the 31st of Jan over here, Let's say that that one is blue. Let's make that blue. I do the text white so it's easier to see. And that is create webinar. Okay, so we can see it in here. And then when I go to January over here, the main objective I'd put create webinar and I'd start on the 1st, I'd finish on the 31st. So let's say today is the Wednesday. What I like to do as well is I highlight these and I make them grey and I strike them out and the day that I'm on I make it yellow and I do, I always do the plan tomorrow today. So the first day for my uh, creating the webinar is I probably put uh, research and planning. Then I would put um, create master slides. Then I'd probably put uh, Create intro script, create intro slide, for example. Okay. And then when it comes to Wednesday night, I've let's say I've probably, you know, done those, create the intro slide. I've not done, so I have to move it over to Thursday. Then when Thursday comes, I move this is grey. And Thursday is now yellow. And that's how I work through different projects. And I'll go through the rice project. I'll put the month and the start and the end date. Then when I go to the warm app on the dashboard, you know, maybe in February, what was number two? Hire an internal media buyer. And it says it will take one person one month. Uh, so let's say... Let's just say for argument's sake, it would take two weeks and I would start it. I'd put the start and end date, but let's say it was the uh, first two weeks. And let's say this one was the green and it'd be higher media buyer. 
kind of thing but it's how we can you know step by step plan all of the actions that we need to do in the first quarter you know by taking all the emotion out by filling in the information on here so then we can actually start to work towards the step-by-step -step accomplishment of the vision the 12-month plan the quarterly goals and the monthly goals how i actually go about like a general in an army in wartime going about doing it deciding what strategic uh, moves to make first is i'll always do the rice project scoring tool then i'll move it over into the warmat calendar so we can see exactly what we're doing over here then by the end of this whole thing this will all be you know all these will be great we'll be into february and what i like to do here is when i change the color i just put that to white and when i'm in february i change that color to red so then i know exactly what month that i'm on and you know what day i'm on what i'm working on and all of that good stuff okay and that's how i uh go about planning and and actually planning the goals planning the vision setting the intention but then also going after the, those goals like a general does in a war strategically going after what needs to get done okay give me a number one in the chat box if that makes sense guys and hopefully i've uh explained that so it does make sense but that's what i do uh and the reason i thought i'd go over that with you guys today is I was looking on Facebook earlier on and my Facebook memories came up and I'll show you. So if I go down here to where are memories at the top. So I was looking at the memories and the one that came up was, uh, which one is it? This one. Uh, and this is one that I posted in the Ignite group, but it was on this day, the 9th of December 2015 at 3.22 a.m. I posted this about how I go after my daily goals and how I plan and all of that stuff. Uh, so I thought it'd be a good idea to share it with you guys and maybe it can help. Uh, maybe you want to plan in between Christmas and New Year, taking a day off or, you know, a couple of days off to just plan and do all of that stuff. Maybe you don't want to wait till next year and you want to start sooner. Maybe it's next week, this week, if that makes sense. Cool. So with that said, guys, um, just to wrap up. Of course, if anyone's got any questions on that, I know you didn't have any questions at the start. Just post in the chat box. I'll answer them. I'll stay on until all your questions are answered. But we've actually signed um i wonder if i can show you in here actually we signed the yeah the lease for the new office it's our first office the video suite oh no that's the bonus video i think uh is it this one and that one yeah the video suite hq office which is going to be pretty fun so what we've been doing today, if I open one of these, and I'll pause it. Um, so this is like the room that we're moving into. So it's a pretty big room, it's a big office. So what we're planning on, planning on doing, this is the business that's in there at the minute, they're gonna be moving out. Uh, where those desks are kind of in between these two that pillar and the pillar on the other side we're going to have four desks there and then on each side of the desks, it's just basically going to be the only goal that we had for the office because we want to grow a lot next year is just to have it as a place where we don't mind hanging out for many hours of the day because we work a lot um so what we've been doing today is looking at kitchens because where these this is the accountants department of that other business these two are the bean counters we're going to have like a breakfast bar and a kitchen bit there for our bulletproof coffees and our healthy smoothies and if we have an order delivery like nando's or wagamama's uh 
you know, that kind of thing. We'll have a breakfast bar table where we can eat at in that corner. Then the back corner, which Chris is covering up there, so kind of on the same side as where the kitchen's going to be, we've been looking uh, at sofas because we're going to have like a couple of big sofas and, uh, sorry, a couple of big bean bags and a, like a, a sofa thing and a big TV on the wall and PlayStation for kind of like a chill out area. In the middle is going to be where the desks are going to be. Then on this bigger area on this side, uh, we're going to put Chris's ping pong table until we do the interactor evolution launch. So at the end of quarter one, we want to make, we want to section off this side of the office, about half of it anyway, and get some glass, you know, see-through glass partition wall doors and have a video studio over there because YouTube's going to be a big strategy that we're going to be working on next year. Uh, and so that, this is going to be the video suite HQ, the video suite office, which is pretty fun. Uh, it's going to be pretty exciting. So any of you guys that are in the UK, or if you ever wanted to just come down and spend a day with us and mastermind or anything like that, of course, you guys are welcome to at any time. And that's been taking up quite a lot of our time over the past week or so, uh, trying to find sofas and kitchens and sorting all of that stuff out. But yeah, all of uh, you guys, all Agency Accelerator members, all Ignite members, you guys can come up any time. The only requirement is you'd need to be able to ride either electric scooters or electric skateboards. So that's what we've ordered as our means of, tra of transport from the office to the closest Nando's. <laughs> so <laughs> be prepared, bring your knee pads and your crash helmets. But um, yeah, uh, with that said, it don't look like there's any other uh, questions on here. If there are any other questions, just post them in the Facebook group. I'm going to go into the Facebook group and post the resources anyway for the Rice project scoring sheet, the warm-up calendar and all that good stuff after we close this call down. And I'll speak to you guys in the Facebook group. Tag me in any posts so I make sure that I see it if you have any questions. And if you don't have any questions, I'll see you on next Monday's call. All right, guys, peace out and see you guys on the next one.